Hey Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. Hey everyone, Matt Dinepoli here. Welcome to episode 185 of Snack Bear. Kareem, I can see you're looking a little tan, middle of summer, just get back from vacation. Yeah, I took a two weeks uh, vacation to Greece. I was on the beach pretty much every day, so that's why. Oh yeah? <laughs> well, the good news is, is that even though while you were on vacation, some of our good friends uh, in engineering were working on updating our fav one of our favorite topics, uh, Cisco Modeling Labs, uh, or CML as we like to know it. And we have some old friends of ours, but new to the show, Ralph and Justin. Um, guys, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourselves, and then we'll get into some of the new updates for, for CML. Yeah, I'm Justin Gualiata. I've been with the uh, Cisco Modeling Labs team for about five years now. Um, I do a lot of architecture, a lot of the UI stuff, some of the back end. Um, but yeah, um, Day to day working on Cisco modeling labs. Fantastic. My name is Ralph. Um, I'm the guy who is in Germany. You can probably tell from the funny accent. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm working on this product from like whatever, like, you know, at, at like 2014 or something. So, like, for a really, really long time. And um, yeah, I'm also like on the engineering side of things and, you know, looking over architecture and also doing, you know, sometimes they let me do programming. So, yeah. Since it was called viral, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, good to have you on the show, guys. What? Uh, so what are we? What are we doing? What's new with CML? Tell us a little bit about what's going on. Yeah, um, we are going to release. Uh, actually, this when this uh, is going to be published, I think we have released a two dot nine. So it's it's a matter of days. We are in the process of releasing it to CCO, and uh, you know, two dot nine is a is a is a very exciting release because we have added something that a lot of our customers have asked for, which is you know the big feature in 2.9 is the support for for Docker containers, which opens up as I said before in in a different context. It opens up an entire new world of applications and network functions and you know, whatever is in a container that may be available on Docker Hub or where you build a specific container for your specific use case yourself. And all of that is now being uh, you know, runnable within within CML. So that that's quite exciting to us. And I hope this is also super exciting to our customers. And that is just a, like the, the big rock feature, but there is a ton of other tiny things, uh, not so tiny things that accompany uh, the container support within uh, CML 2.9. So uh, let me get some clarification on this because I'm not um, a, a, not super familiar with past instances of us being able to run containers, but is this the ability to run containers on the virtual images of the devices or is this a, the ability to run containers as separate outside services uh, but within Cisco Modeling Labs? It is the ability to run containers as full featured nodes, like, you know, full, uh, you know, first class citizens, I should say, within CML. So like previously, uh, all nodes, except for like, you know, very few are uh, virtual machines, like full featured x86 virtual machines uh, running inside of Kimu, running inside of CML. Uh, there were a few exceptions, like, you know, external connectors and these kind of things, like some adjacent or like, you know, auxiliary nodes. Mm -hmm. And then there was also IOL, which is kind of a, you know, in-between thing. Uh, but now with containers, you basically have the ability to run um, a network operating system or a network virtual function inside of a Docker container. Um, and and it's a, a full node type that that you can run inside of CML. So like the, the best thing I guess to show or like to demonstrate is, is a demonstration to actually show what that would look like. Sure, let's see it. Yeah, let's get into it. All right, yeah. So I, I have a, a little instance running here. Um, and um, as you can tell, this is what we call the dashboard where you have you know, multiple labs showing up. Right now, I just have one uh, for the demo purpose here. And you can see this is my little demo topology here. And inside of that demo topology, we have a bunch of nodes. And um, so these nodes here, they are like, oh, this is a virtual machine. This is an Ubuntu virtual machine. So this is something that CML could do from, from day one, pretty much. And then like the auxiliary things that I mentioned before, like it's like an external connectivity like these guys here. Then there is a you know two networking devices, but and you know traditional routers and switches. But then there is also these things in the green bubble over here, which are containers. And as you can tell, I mean these are these are like Chrome and Firefox. These are browsers, and and these are network functions. So like in this case, this is just a TACX plus uh, authentication service, and this is the web server over here. So we can bring this guy up, and then we can provide um, you know 
packet service and just packet service to the network here. So if I if I look at this guy here, so this just runs the um, you know TACX Plus service, like it's an open source uh, TACX Plus implementation. And if you click on the configuration over here, you see uh, how this is being configured. So you can see, okay, so this is my network device that is allowed to talk to it. And then there is like a couple of groups and users set up. And uh, just for the demo purpose here, I could uh, click on this link here and say, hey, I want to do a packet capture on this link to actually see what's going on. And I could potentially, yeah, it should be fine. And then if I go uh, to this guy over here and open up a console, and you could already see packets coming in here. So if I say enable here, um, and then do a telnet to 10.32.0.10, which, which is this device here, right? And this device has been set up to use TACX for authentication using this, this little thing over here. And I see that I get the TACX plus prompt and I can log in using TACX admin. Oops, if I could type and uh, uh, admin one, two, three, and I get access here. So if I look at this guy over here and do the same thing on the console, I could see my TACX log showing up here. Like this was in uh, like, you know, the result of my authentication coming in. And if I look at my packet capture, I would potentially see uh, uh, maybe further down the road, I could see the TACX, TACX packages coming in. And so this is perfect for, you know, like students to learn about like TACX authentication. We also have a container for radius and we have like these little things that we bundle the product now with, with 2.9, where we have a bunch of network functions, a bun bunch of like, you know, helpers or network tooling, um, like that are not they don't need to run in a virtual machine using a lot of resources. They can also run in a container. And this is like the purpose of this thing, using very little resources. And if we if we look at at this thing here, you can see there is my Ubuntu node, which uses 583 megabytes of memory right now. But then there is my my TACX container. I mean, if you can tell this is this is just like, you know, the the the, the essence of it, right? It's just running this TACX process inside of that node. So it's very resource efficient. But we also have, you know, maybe just the the final bit that I wanted to show you guys is like, you know, a a Firefox container or a Chrome container. So you don't have to fire up an entire virtual machine just to get a browser. So we can fire up this guy. And if you watch it very closely, you can see that it's queued. It's going to be started. Uh, and then boom, while it, when it was started, like the, the green check mark was showing up immediately. And then I can go to VNC open up BNC on this guy. It's probably going to be very small. Um, and um, it has a connection. It has a Firefox browser. Uh, it obviously has a Firefox browser and it has a connection. And using this entire network topology that we have here, so basically this thing um, going from the browser through this access switch and then you know network address translation to this routing device to the internet, we can actually browse the internet. But this could also be used to like you know provide a uh, you know a web browser for some internal service. Let's assume that you have you know ICE, for example, inside of your topology, which is by the way something that we also ship with 2.9. Uh, if you have the resources to run it, that obviously would use a bit more than a couple of megabytes in terms of memory and CPU, you know, compared to TACX Plus, this little container thing here. But, you know, I mean, you can do these kind of things and there's your browser that goes with it that sits in your topology running as a container, not using a lot of resources. I stop here. <laughs> that's that's really, really cool. Uh, Justin and, and uh, Ralph, do you, it, do we have a, like a catalog of all the, the containers that are pre-built for our users to like just be able to import? Is this something that's available? Yeah, it is part of the release notes. Uh, that's... Uh, that's all well documented and has also like for the individual containers documentation for what you can do, what you need to configure, what you can configure, you know, what what are the, the moving parts inside there. Yeah, and just to real quick emphasize uh, what, yeah, what Ralph was saying, I mean, the, the main benefit for those that aren't familiar with containers, I'm assuming most people are these days, but the main benefits that you get with CML are they're lightweight, extremely lightweight, and they're going to boot a lot quicker than a traditional VM. Um, so that's that's really the main benefit here, because technically you could do all of this stuff via a virtual machine today and any other versions of CML, but you would have to run a virtual machine and then have these services 
on top of that particular virtual machine. But what Docker allows you to do is run this lightweight container with you know just one application. Um, so you can spin it up quickly um, and not have all the uh, extra overhead of running an entire virtual machine just for one node running one service. I know that we, we could run um, other services on VMs and kind of uh, partition them as needed. Uh, but it feels like this kind of not pushes the edge of um, not just the learning experience, but <clears throat> if we're going to leverage Cisco Modeling Labs as a testing agent for um, like an infrastructure as code deployment, we could start to look at more real world opportunities here where um, we would have had to, for lack of a better word, kind of work around them <laughs> uh, it, through through services within a VM. But this actually gives us the opportunity to test real world scenarios. And then I I hate to say it, you guys are going to groan when I say it, but now we could start more easily adding in AI services as well, um, because that allows us to put these individual services right into our CML, test them out the way they would be in the real world and have a, a lot more comfort level when we go to production and push those changes out that these things are gonna work. Um, so my, you know, while Ralph was going through the demo, man, my head was spinning on the things that we could do with this. Yeah, and, and, and you know, my favorite phrase here is that, you know, you're, you're uh, putting something in production that is not running for the first time because it didn't run for the first time. You run it inside of, you know, some testing environment like CML and you test the heck out of it. And then when you put it into production, it's, it, you have the confidence or like you have a better confidence, a higher confidence that it is working as it is intended to work. Is there um, API support for this? So I know we could build our topology and via the actual CML APIs, could I? Uh, part of that flow that I build, uh, import my my uh, containers via APIs as well? Today, yeah. So like the the Docker containers, we do ship with the ones that you see here. And as Ralph mentioned, they'll be part of the release notes uh, of, about what's you know officially supported. But um, additionally, you can um, add your own um, container types uh, in CML. So, you, I mean, it is a process and that'll be documented in the uh, documentation notes as well on how to import a um, a custom Docker image, but that is something that we do support. In terms of API support, I mean, nothing has changed. Uh, like whether it's a Docker container, whether it's a VM, like the way how you how you interact with the system, the APIs haven't changed for that matter. Um, so, like as I said before, Do Docker is a first class citizen in this context. Gotcha. Thank that you. makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Justin, you had a, had something you want to show us to extend the the demo. All right. So, in all versions of Cisco Modeling Labs, we've had this concept of sample labs. And the idea behind Sample Labs is to give you just something to get started. Um, but we get asked constantly from people at Cisco Live and our user base that, hey, I have Cisco Modeling Labs. I know that I can build a custom topology, but what a lot of people would like to have is some pre-built lab so they can just jump in, import that lab, and get started right away. So as I mentioned before, we've had this in Cisco Modeling Labs uh, in all versions, but in 2.9, we've extended this functionality. And for those that don't know, we do have a GitHub repo um, that is public. Um, we do um, take in pull requests as well. So if you wanna add additional content in there, we do um, review those pull requests and pull information in. But in that GitHub repo, we have sample labs, we have um, some plugins, we have additional node definitions. So if you are trying to get third-party devices working inside of CML, that would be a good starting point for you. Um, but in 2.9, we've integrated the sample labs that we have in that GitHub repo inside of CML. So CML 2.9 will ship with a snapshot of what's available in that GitHub repo. And you can see here, there's quite a few labs uh, inside of CML now. There, I believe there's 58. We did a CCNA contest, uh, I guess it was probably six months or maybe a little bit longer, uh, where we had people submit CCNA uh, labs uh, into the GitHub repo, and those are all going to be part of Cisco Modeling Labs. So if I click on one of these labs, you can see the description of it. You can now see a preview of it. And then if I hit import, it'll import that lab, and then you can start it and uh, get running with that lab right away. Um, additionally, if you're an admin, you can come into system administration and come down to lab repositories. And you can see here, this is the one that I mentioned previously that we ship with. So it's uh, github.com, Cisco DevNet, and CML-community. And then we specify just the lab topologies folder is what we import. So just the sample labs. 
If you have additional uh, lab repositories, like something internal um, or just even something public that you want to include inside a CML, you can click the add button here um, and then type in the, um, it doesn't have to be GitHub, it just has to be a Git repo. So it could be GitLab, it could be um, Bitbucket, um, lots of other uh, Git options are available there, um, but you would add that URL um, and then it would add an additional repository. And as we make changes to uh, the, lab repository here, if you want to sync those changes, you would hit the refresh button and that would go out to the GitHub and do a sync. So, you know, say six months from now, we've added, you know, a hundred new labs, you hit that refresh button and it would pull all those in automatically. And then when you come under tools um, and sample labs, and you would see those additional labs as part of the sample labs repository. And then we're working with Cisco U. We're trying, like right now, I mentioned we have CCNA labs. We're trying to get some more advanced uh, labs uh, moving forward. So CCMP and CCIE level uh, lab, that's something that we get asked about a lot at Cisco Live as well. So that's something that's uh, in the works. But the good thing is, is with 2.9, as I mentioned, this is synced up. So when we add those labs, the only thing you'll have to do is go into the administration page, hit refresh, and it'll pull in any additional labs. That's really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Not having to go out and pull it down and do an import and pick through the list like that. This is great. Gentlemen, unfortunately, um, this is all the time we have today to cover this, but you are newbies. So we do have to save a little bit of time at the end here. Newbies to, to snack minute. To yeah. snack minute. Yeah, yeah. Not to not to. <laughs> so uh, I'll start with Ralph um, and I'll Justin. This will give you time to think about it. Um, which superpower would you choose to have and why? Oh, boy. I think if I had really like the choice, I probably would want to be able to time travel and to go to, you know, a time like, you know, whatever the medieval age or something, just as a visitor, like, you know, Romans or whatnot, like it just as a visitor, obviously not being exposed to like all the violence and whatever happened there. But, you know, being able to watch something that happened in the past would be really super cool. <laughs> I, I agree with you on that. Uh, Justin, how about you? I agree with Ralph. I'm, 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 I don't want to steal his though. So I'm going to go with uh, flying. Okay. Um, I think flying would be very, yeah. very cool just to be able to soar above everything and just, you know, fly from point A to point B and not have to take a plane. <laughs> that, that, I mean, that's all the top of our minds with Superman just coming back out. So that's right. Yeah. Flying in, flying in time, time travel, but specifically to medieval times. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Uh, this was fantastic. I think our snackers are going to be really excited about the opportunities that um, 2.9 is going to give us for working with CML in our learning and in our in our testing strategy. So um, thank you for that. I can't wait to use the the new features. Uh, Ralph and uh, Justin, thank you for your time today. Thanks awesome. for having us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you so much. And maybe until next time. Yes, well, we, should, we for sure. I'm sure there's new, uh, there's more exciting stuff that you guys are working on. Awesome.